this is the first of what may, might be a series of short video clips about various topics in the games theory. Right, and this comes from chapter 2 of Osborne's book about Nash Equilibria. I want to do a first introduction to strategic games. These are perhaps the simplest games. Uh, we can make these a lot more complicated, a lot more realistic. Let's just start with the simplest things possible. Right, and the simplest games consist of three things. They consist of uh, a set of players. We'll usually have two players. Okay, that's the simple thing. Real, more complicated games have three, four, any number of players. The second thing a game consists of is a set of actions for each player. And the, one of the key issues in games theory is actually deciding what the set of actions are. And the third thing that a game, a strategic game, needs is a set of preferences. That is, for each possible outcome, each possibly choice of actions by the players, there, each player has a preference for that particular outcome. Now what we're going to do, just to introduce those concepts, is to look at one particular game, namely the Prisoner's Dilemma. It's a very famous game. You can read about it anywhere, but let's just have a look at it. Uh, I expect you to read about other games in the book by Osborne. All right now, Prisoner's Dilemma, got this to write with, um, involves just two people. Osborne calls them Suspect 1 and Suspect 2. We'll call them Alice and Bob, because it's a bit more personal that way. Alice and Bob are prisoners. They've been arrested, suspected of some heinous crime. And they've got a choice. They're under interrogation. They've got a choice. They can either keep quiet about the crime or they can confess and think on the other person. Right? If they confess, um, then they'll get given a light sentence and the other person will be given a heavy sentence. If they don't confess, then they'll be given a medium sentence. So let's see how this is a game. Right, so there's the two suspects. That's the two players. What are the actions? Each person, Alice and Bob, has two actions. They can be quiet or they can uh, think. And it's the same actions for both of them. That needn't be the case. You can have different actions. Then there's the preferences. Which is the preferred outcome? Now, the easiest way to record preferences is in a 2 by 2 square array, often called the game matrix. So let me show that to you now. Um, we put, generally we'll put one person down on the left and the other person across the top. And we'll put their options. Alice can be quiet or can think, and Bob can be quiet, or he can think. And for each choice of Alice and Bob, um, we have one of these outcomes. So if Alice and Bob are both quiet, it's this outcome in this square. If Alice is quiet, Bob thinks it's this outcome. Alice thinks and Bob is quiet, it's this outcome. If Alice thinks and Bob thinks, it's that outcome. We write in these squares the preferences. Now, what's the least preferred preference for Alice? And I'll write Alice in black, um, just to make use of colours. Right, so Alice is black. The least preferred outcome is if Alice is quiet and Bob thinks, then Alice will get a big sentence because the police find out all about the crime, commit Alice to a long sentence. So we put a zero there to denote the least uh, preferred. 
the next preferred, the next least preferred outcome by Alice is this one, if they both think. So if they both confess to the crime, they'll get sent to jail for say 10 years. Here, Alice would get sent to jail for 15 years. So she thinks 10 years is a better outcome than 15 years in jail. So she prefers this to that. However, she would prefer it if both of them kept quiet because, and that's the next preference, uh, because if they're both quiet, the police only have circumstantial evidence and so they just both get sent down for a relatively short period, say five years. The best outcome for Alice is when she thinks and Bob is quiet because then Bob gets sent down for 15 years, which she doesn't care about. Um, and Alice, because she cooperates with the police, um, gets a very short sentence, like one year or even released. So that's the most preferred outcome for Alice. Okay, now I've written Alice's preferences on the left, because she was on the left here, Bob has different preferences, so I've got to put numbers in here for Bob, and I'll put them on the right, and that's traditional because Bob's up the top, and he's red, if you can see the colour. So what are Bob's preferences? Well, his least preferred outcome is this one down here, because this is the one where he gets sent down for 15 years while Alice gets away. It's got free. Least preferred, zero. His next least preferred outcome is if they both confess, because then they both get sent down for 10 years, so he gets in jail for 10 years, doesn't care about Alice, just himself. So that's better than 15, but it's still not very good. The next preferred outcome is if they are both quiet. Bob thinks that's pretty good but he's still in jail for five years. He can do better if he confesses and Alice is quiet, because in that circumstance, he gets away with only a very, very light sentence, one year or even getting released, because he cooperated with police. That's his best outcome. So here then is how we can code mathematically, and that's all it is, very simple, a simple um, but enormously intriguing game, The Prisoner's Dilemma. And often the key thing in games theory is not so much analysing these numbers but being able to write down these numbers in the first place. Once we've got these numbers, as we will see, you can actually make a prediction about what they will do very quickly. And we'll see that later.